But we're seeing, uh, I guess, we're, we're fans of Moore's law here and the, uh, the doubling of the density and power of devices, but also the collapse in, in price as well, which kind of goes along with Moore's law. It's a slightly different uh, trajectory. But we're seeing incredible power in the computing equipment. And we're seeing um, non-traditional equipment becoming proliferating uh, in a whole range of industries. So we talk a lot about the home automation industry or maybe the health and fitness. But in Waterford, we have a strong link to agriculture. We're seeing um, low-cost devices and sensors on the farm, in the fields, and in the milking parlors. And we're seeing vast amounts of data being generated with this type of, uh, these type of sensors and this type of data gathering. That data is revolutionizing a lot of other industries who've learned how to do analytics. And we think it's going to be very important now in the new industries that haven't been touched by this to date. We would have had, um, in the past, in fact, degrees that combine hardware and software, but they tended to fade out in the 90s as we became more specialized in software or there was a more dedicated engineering and things like telecoms and power. Now we're kind of rediscovering what we used to do to a certain extent, but taking it on a, a good bit further. So our particular program, it's dominated by software, very um, cutting edge software skills, but uh, a very carefully selected slice of electronics, maybe about a third of the course particularly on digital anal analog aspects of control, sensor design, and um, the general context in which uh, communications takes place in the, at the physical layer. It's probably going to break some new ground, really, because when we would have done this in the past, the equipment at the time was very expensive and fairly primitive. Now it's cheap. Now we can, we can have a fantastic lab at almost no cost, which is extraordinary. We are expecting students to invest in their own equipment. Uh, maybe as an alternative to what they would have spent in the past on textbooks, which are now, because of open source movement, largely free. So they can build a portfolio of their own connected world and graduate with that portfolio. So they can demonstrate their entire suite of very innovative distributed software applications running on gadgets they own and that they can maybe have built and certainly applications they would have possibly been pioneers in by the time they graduate. But we're seeing all the big multinationals that we deal with have entered things strategies. So we would see there's a big demand from you know the usual suspects, probably in Intel, Cisco, uh, IBM, a very big presence in it, uh, Tyco, a very big company in Cork that's taking, uh, actually looking exactly for this kind of skill. Hard to predict though what a student's innate um, desires will take them. Some of them may be entrepreneurs. They may be builders of new services. Some of them may be oriented in research and that they may come to work in a place like this or other research centers that are pioneering in this area. And of course, then we would see they'd have very good software skills so they could take a conventional software position if they so chose or work possibly with one of the multinationals or startups in this area. So we're looking for a fairly comprehensive skill set that would leave them very well positioned really.